How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. So we're quickly reaching the end of the financial year and now is the perfect time to consider buying a 3D printer. Especially if you've been sitting on the fence and especially if you're in Australia because the government's made it possible to instantly write off anything purchased under $20,000. So none of this ridiculous depreciation stuff, you can write off the tax instantly. So I've put together a list of 10 machines all the way from very low end up to very high end prosumer 3D printers that I think are the best on the market. And yeah, enjoy! So firstly is the Wanhao Duplicator i3, which takes the open source i3 design, but in a ready to run format. Wanhao have actually done quite a few sexy upgrades to an already good design. For a start, the chassis is all sheet metal, resulting in a far more robust and rigid design compared to the lower cost acrylic frames that you might see for other i3 designs. You also get a heated build volume of 200 by 200 by 180 with a single extruder setup with a new Mark 10 direct driven design. So I really love the look of this machine. It's industrial, sturdy and quite a you know no nonsense machine. And although it's not yet available in Australia, you can pick them up for under 450 US from One How USA. So definitely if you're in the market for a low cost entry level machine, this one takes the cake. One How are partners with Simplify 3D as well, so profiles should be quite easily available or you can choose pretty much any other free slicer out there. So next is the Up Mini, my first 3D printer and still maintains in my opinion the title of the easiest to use machine under $1,000. Its build volume is a tiny 120mm cubed, but it has the best print quality and ABS of any machine in its class, as well as being one of the easiest to use software packages. Not to mention that sexy black enclosure which is a must for keeping the chamber nice and warm for printing ABS without warping. Sadly, the filament costs for UP has been steadily climbing to the point where you can purchase almost five aftermarket rolls for the cost of one UP brand spool. It's fairly ridiculous. However, thanks to community generated mods, it's now possible to print all manner of materials by changing temperatures and other settings which otherwise were locked down previously in the UP software. Now we're starting to move up into dual extruder territory with the Flashforge Dreamer and Flashforge Creator Pro. Both are fantastically built Chinese workhorses. So the way I describe the Flashforge machines are more like if MakerBot got the 2X and continued to improve it rather than bringing out the oh so terrible MakerBot 5th gen. So the Dreamer is a maker's dream come true, capable of printing all but the most delicate of experimental filaments. I've printed flexibles, Colorfab bronze fill, Colorfab XTCF20 carbon fiber with no issues on the Flashforge Dreamer. The software Flashforge provides does leave a little bit to be desired, but Simplify 3D really unlocks the potential of these machines. So the Creator Pro has a nicer metal chassis compared to the Dreamer's plastic, but it does lack the touch screen. So I'm sort of secretly hoping Flashforge will bring out something like a Flashforge Dreamer Pro that combines the best traits of both machines. The cost of the Flashforge Dreamer and Creator Pro tends to hover around the one half thousand Australian dollar mark. So now we're starting to move up towards the prosumer market. So this is beyond tinkerers and hobbyists. 3D printing with machines like the Up Mini and Flashforge still do require quite a hands-on experience. So enter the CEL Robox. Apart from looking super sexy, the Robox has automated everything. Bed leveling, nozzle height, even the spools are intelligent and know what print settings to use and how much is remaining. And one of the features that Robux has which really sets it apart is it has active filament feed detection. So if there's a jam on your filament or any other issue, the machine will try to fix it mid-print or worst case, it will pause and wait for your intervention. So this is something almost no other entry-level 3D printer does and even some of the prosumer machines still do not do. They do not detect filament issues. So the dual extruder setup and needle valves are also pretty nifty, allowing printing with a 0.3 nozzle for fine or a 0.8 nozzle for very fast draft prints and the needle valves shut off the nozzles quite nicely, stopping any sort of dripping or oozing between layers. The print volume isn't that big at 210 by 150 by 100 millimeters, but the ease of use is fast making the Robox the go-to printer for schools and small design studios. So moving up to the two to $3,000 realm is the Upbox, the long-awaited machine from PP3DP. The Upbox has all the features of previous Up machines, but with a bigger build volume, and a really nicely made enclosed build chamber. The Upbox also has a brand new automated bed level and nozzle height function for ease of use. My only real complaint with the Upbox is the spool holder on the side. They made the machine bigger, but then shrunk the spool sizes down to 500 grams. That doesn't really make too much sense in my opinion, but nothing stops you running an external spool of a larger size. And then we have the Cubicon, a fairly unknown machine and one of the first few machines to come out with an actively heated build chamber. I guess that patent finally ran out, hey Stratasys. 
The Cubicon has a fairly decent build volume of 240 by 190 by 200 millimeters. So early reports indicate the quality to be on par, if not better in some cases, to professional Stratasys machines. And like the up box, it contains a HEPA filter to remove 3D printing odors and full automatic calibration with bed leveling and nozzle height. The Cubicon single extruder model comes in at just under 4,000 AUD, which is pretty expensive but it's easily justifiable by design and engineering firms as well as schools and universities wanting a bulletproof machine that just works without having to go up to something like a $30,000 Stratasys U-Print. Now for a printer that's somewhat left of field, the Zentmorph is a Polish design with a focus on not so much a 3D printer but more of a micro factory capable of accepting multiple tool heads for anything between 3D printing of plastics, ceramics, chocolate, to engraving and even laser cutting. The software incorporates an innovative voxelizer which converts your 3D file into what are essentially 3D pixels. This allows for easy processing to suit the selected tool head. Zetmore's focus is on an open source community and actively encourage the community to create their own tool heads. So this business approach has recently landed them substantial funding to push this fairly small 3D printing company towards international distribution and 3D Printing Studios has one on the way for testing. So I'm actually really interested to try this machine out. The full Zentmorph kit with all the tool heads will retail for around $4,500 Australian, so it's certainly not a cheap printer or a machine for beginners, but it could offer a complete and compact manufacturing solution for many people. And finally, an honorary mention to the Zortrax Inventure, and I say honorary because it's not actually available yet. So Zortrax is a fantastic company and their M200 machine has won many awards and it's undeniably a fantastic printer. But the InVenture promises the holy grail of affordable 3D printing, a heated chamber with a soluble support material that actually works. So the print volume is a tiny 130mm cubed, but the promise of being able to print and just chuck your part into a bath to dissolve support is you know, a no-brainer. No word on cost yet, and it's very likely you'll be locked down to their cartridges, but it's certainly promising, and if successful, will single-handedly destroy the current entry-level machine with this technology, the Stratasys Mojo, which has a cost price of around 10,000 Australian dollars. So there you have it, my own pick of 3D printers on the market, but there is heaps of machines on the market. I could not possibly cover them all, like the Ultimakers. Personally, I don't have any experience with them, so I couldn't recommend them, but I do know a lot of other people swear by them, and yeah, like the Zortrax, uh, M200, great machines. There's there's so many on the market. But yeah, definitely do your research before purchasing machines. Don't buy them because of my recommendation because your needs may be different to my needs, for example. So always research printers before buying them. But yeah, if you can get them by before the end of the financial year if you're in Australia, you can write the whole thing off. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. This is a little figurine that I've produced. And next video, I'll be showing you how to make him using your phone. So yeah, like iPhone, Android, iPad, Windows 8. It's called Tinkerplay. See you soon, guys. Bye.